Good to have you back to our show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And this is our 253rd episode, and you are around our 13,500 viewer. And uh, our means us at the contrary ends or beginnings of the world ever since, um, I guess, um, the uh, enlightenment, we know that the globe is round. So uh, we are with you, DeSoto Brown, in your Bishop Museum. Hi. Good day, everyone. And we are with me here in your Munich, Germany. And if we can get the first slide up, we're still operating uh, in unprecedented, we like to rightly so call it, uh, circumstances. And uh, this is a very special show because I caught something that is around, which is COVID. And don't worry, it's not contagious through the internet. And thankfully, I believe to think that my second booster is shot. So if you guys all get your shots that were still performed by the uh, wife of my German general consul, Dennis Sala Nadine, up at Queen's Hospital. That's why I'm thinking my symptoms are relatively okay. But if you hear me sneezing or coughing, then I apologize for that. So uh, what else do we have going on in the world? Uh, obviously, we have wars going on, one pretty close to me in the Ukraine, and we have climate change. And uh, there are still some people who deny climate change. Uh, here is your weekly uh, German lesson, DeSoto. So what does this uh, gentleman with the orange hair want to tell us? Uh, he is saying, and I'm just quoting from what you told me beforehand, because I can't really understand it, more real estate on the beach or on the shoreline. Uh, and then he is denying climate change. Is that what that says? The, the yeah, black he's, type? He's, he's belittling it. Verniedlich heißt mm. belittling. And very cynically, what you said before, he's saying, oh, we get more beachfront property, which you say is very, it's not just cynical, it's stupid as he is, because he is now a Floridian by choice, and he lives at Mar-a-Lago, which, as the name indicates, is beachfront. And you might say, well, these rich people, they have the money in the world and they can do something to bump up their building or whatever, right? But um, anyways, um, in all fairness, I have to say there isn't just stupid people in one or the other country or culture. In my native culture, there is our former president, Gerhard Schröder, who isn't any more smart because he was ever since and still is uh, supporting Putin. Uh, cutting the corner to a positive angle and the female uh, is that Ursula von der Leyen, our commission president of the European Union, is also from my home state and she is the daughter of a former governor and our foreign minister, who we see in the middle and to the right here, um, uh, Annalena Baerbock, is also from my hometown. So that makes up for it. Um, but again, we don't want to make it any discrimination, certainly not uh, reverse gender discrimination, um, because there's also good guys, right, who can um, lead us in, in, in a good way. And one we will always remember, well, let's stay with Annalena for a little bit and you share with me how you felt about the news that I was sharing with you that we see here in the middle and on the right. Where did she go and why? Well, she is being quoted here and shown. Uh, as having as visiting Palau, and Palau was formerly part of the German Empire before World War One. And this is, as you told me, she's the first high-ranking German official to revisit Palau since the uh, after World War One. Germany lost all of its overseas territories, but she is here to hear the story from firsthand from people who are affected in the Pacific Ocean, living on coral atolls that are not much above the uh, level of the ocean, how the ocean is literally creeping up and swallowing their homes. And you pointed out, and I think this was her conscious choice, that she is a member of the Green Party. And in these photos, you can see that she's wearing a, a green dress. And I don't think that was just by chance. I think that she is promoting her party in this particular situation because she's pulling a spotlight onto the effects of climate change on people who are going to feel it very quickly more so and more permanently than people, for example, who live on continents. Everybody's yeah. going to be affected by changing weather, but people in Germany, for example, are not going to find their homes underwater quite as soon as people in Palau 
and other Pacific places. Yeah, I like Hawaii as one, by the way, as well, just to remind us, Brian. Yes, exactly. That's why we make that connection here. And again, while some not so smart people want to basically distract and, and say, why did she as the Green Party member fly all around the world and burning kerosene? She was, by the way, on the way to the G20 <laughs> summit uh, that was in Bali. So that was only a few flight hours away. And in the, in the centerpiece, that uh, slogan there or that title there, I don't make you do more German than necessary. So you had yours, your fair <laughs> share. But that means that she calls climate change uh, the biggest security threat in the world and that everything gravitates around. And the point is, again, while Trump is on this sort of privileged position as a rich man, um, to basically, and, and as Schröder, you know, and they all were little, we were all little as children, right? But they somehow, their mindset is little and some things happened in their childhood that is in their way in both cases. Um, but we also have someone who um, is the opposite. And that's our favorite President Jimmy Carter show quoted at the top in the middle who has always had and continues to have up into his 90s, which he is now, uh, hard for the little people because he was one, as you told me, he was the only president who ever lived in social housing. And he <laughs> also lived on the island in the barracks when he was serving, right? So he knows, and that's why he goes for Habitat for Humanity and builds houses for the little people and the poor people. So along these lines, we're pointing out to someone who in 2020, show quote, top right, was offering to run for president. And we would like to remind him of that. And that is our island boy, Dwayne Johnson, with whom we concluded the show uh, next, uh, last week. And go to the next slide. That's the one that we showed very briefly. And that link up there that we wanted you to watch. And if you haven't, please do it after this show here. Because it's fascinating, because Dwayne um, is uh, doing this selfie movie on, on his phone. And he says, I'm sitting in this tinted window Escalade Cadillac and looking like a creep. And probably the police are going to stop by and call me out on that. And he says, but the reason why I'm here is that I'm, when I'm always back on the island, my island that I grew up on, I go to the place where I lived. And, and go and feel again how it was to be a little person with uh, parents with a little paycheck. And that little, that one day we got evicted. We had an eviction note on the door and out we were. And that basically had them leave the island because they couldn't afford it anymore. So that made us being uh, the detectives we sometimes need to be. And here's our publicly investigating mobile that we pull out for these reasons. And we drove by because you, uh, based upon that little glimpse of a, of a, of a moment here that you see uh, under uh, diagonally uh, below his, his face there, that little fraction of a second uh, was enough for you to identify the building, right? So mm -hmm. tell us more mm -hmm. about the building. Well, the building is located in what's called the Kapilani Business District, uh, and it is called the Leona Apartments because it's on Leona Street. It was one of a series of buildings that were all built by the same developer, designed by the same uh, architect in the early 19, late 50s and early 1960s, which ended with the Pagoda Hotel and Restaurant, which is just down the street directly ahead uh, in the picture where we are looking at the building. And this building, although it is very modest, does have very positive attributes that we really like. And in the first place, I have to point out that the owners have continued to keep it up, even though, again, it is a modest building. It is not run down. And I really admire that. But also, it's very easy breezy. It's uh, the walls of the apartments are composed of jealousies, which could be opened and closed. And it is not taking up a great deal of room. It's not taking up a great deal of energy to keep it going. And even though it is low cost, it is actually a desirable place to live based on its condition and its design. And so that's admirable. And as we have just said, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, is now an incredibly wealthy man, an incredibly famous man. He's one of 
possibly the highest paid movie star in the world at the moment. He is. But he came from these very modest, this very uh, small, inexpensive building. And that's one of that's the that's the point of why he did this little video that we are referring to saying, I came from this, we got evicted, and yet I have become very successful. If you are in similar situation, don't feel down and out. There is the possibility through hard work to get to a place where you are successful. And even though he looks back on this and says this is, uh, again, someplace mixed that's memories. mixed memories, absolutely. Yeah. And he's gotten much beyond that. But still, from our standpoint, from architecturally looking at things, this is not a shabby little building. It's something that's got very admirable traits. It's exactly the point. It's, it's his circumstances he was in that he couldn't see the, the other dimension that we want to point out and probably should send this to him to talk to him about this and maybe get him on a show. And we did our research about the, the, the price point of units. You can still snap a studio bottom left from a realtor's page for a little bit just <laughs> under a thousand bucks. And that's a steal. You can hardly find that anywhere, anywhere on the island. And uh, so we're now basically saying education is key, right? You should, you should, again, what we're doing is edutainment and the educational part in there. Um, next slide as uh, one of our best uh, educators, edutainers, Kurt Sandburn, had once been uh, uh, featuring it uh, in a civil beat article that he wrote here about the area that we're talking about and the building is in there. Uh, and the architect you mentioned, uh, it, he's uh, Takashi Anbi, who has quite some uh, robust body of work on the island. However, he's not recognized as much as he should. And <laughs> since we're uh, asked to write a book about uh, Honolulu's architecture, we will try to make up for that. And we just started the list and it's, it's pretty impressive. So these are the Leona apartments by Takashi Anbi from 1961. And this picture here was taken by David Franson, who was one of our best um, photographers about especially mid-century architecture. And uh, next slide um, is pointing out top left again, then Dwayne turns his camera to this only for another fraction of a second and basically says, well, here I was in this building where I felt little and poor. Uh, because my parents' <laughs> income wasn't sufficient. And I was looking to the other side of the street and I saw this gorgeous high rise, he calls it. And he wished he would have been there. And then, as you said, you know, he's uh, the highest paid actor. Also, for the women in the house, he is uh, JQ elected sexiest man on earth. He's all of that. But what makes him special, and we believe qualifies him to be president, just like Jimmy Carter, he kept his humbleness. And he basically says, well, today I'm doing okay, which is an understatement, <laughs> of course. And, um, and he shares that with us. And, and this is really interesting because um, here we took this picture where you see both. You see the Leona apartments, which is sort of the horizontal high rise, and then you see this vertical high rise behind. And next slide is doing research on that building. That's by the architect Norman Lacayo. And we thought that's why we put in this image of Dallas, the De Dallas TV series, which is the embodiment of the 80s of the Ronald Reagan era of the fossil. You pump it out, uh, <laughs> what the heck? And the buildings basically show that. So this is a grantedly nicely sort of tailored and grooved uh, glass high rise, but it's still a glass high rise with little to no connection to the tropical exotic outdoors, which basically uh, Takashi Anbi has been promoting through all his projects. And a uh, good end of this story here, uh, Norman Lacayo did as well in the next decade <laughs> in the 90s, which we see at the bottom right with Harbor Court, which is uh, Lanai again which is basically good news. So next slide, staying with uh, Takashi Anbi uh, a little bit more. One of our favorite buildings of him, of his, is the Contessa Apartments. And you always have nice background stories that only you know. 
Could you share that with us on, on what what's with a spot it stands on? This yeah, this is this is an interesting story, which would not be repeated today. This is built on the site of what had been a small church, Protestant church, a chapel, actually, but with a graveyard uh, as part of the grounds. And the church was associated with Kawaiahoa Church, which is in downtown Honolulu. And as its members gradually moved away or died off, it no longer was in use. And so the property was sold for this development in the early 1970s. Now, the ironic thing or the thing which today people would be not pleased about is that the remains of the people buried in the graveyard were exhumed and taken to Kawaihaua Church and reburied in their graveyard. Well, today, we wouldn't be able to do that. Legally, people would object to it. And spiritually and socially, people would find it very offensive and it wouldn't happen. And in fact, there were rumors, and they may still be around today, that the area was haunted because the people had been exhumed for the construction of the building. Um, I don't know if any of that has ever actually been proven true, but certainly that is the fact of where the building is. It's also very prominent because even at the time, of course, there was nothing around it. And even today, there aren't any other high rises nearby to distract from it. So you really can see it very clearly standing by itself, even today, many decades after it was constructed. And ironically and interestingly, in the photograph that we have of it, there is a very tall, skinny Cook Island pine or Norfolk pine next to it to emphasize that it too is very tall, skinny, and prominent. That's from my collection, DeSoto, because that's from my bicycle way to work along the golf course. Uh, in Waikiki, when I bicycle there and uh -huh. across the bridge where Yolani School then is, when you take a left mm -hmm. turn, and this is when you have that. And we always use it as an as a, an ancestor for our primitivas, yeah. because when Takashi Anbi was really about louvering things, and the Contessa is horizontally louvered. There's Lanai's, um, you know. Uh, of significant depth to sit on there, but even all the other windows have a shallow lanai in front of it that you can clean the window and even, you know, take a breath there and hopefully not smoke a cigarette. Uh, hope you don't <laughs> do that. Talking being haunted, there is a show quote of uh, President Nixon who seemed to have been haunted by some devils. And we just want to point out that this is, was built in that time and you know, architects really with an attitude and with a heart at the right place didn't get themselves distracted by intermediate, in that case, luckily, you know, bad uh, leaderships on, on, again, the presidential highest national kind of level. They continued to do their things. And show quotes at the right there uh, show uh, his different variations of basically Louvern and screens that he was always about mitigating uh, the intense sun and the heat. And um, uh, I, top right, uh, the, the, the red uh, sticker on there is uh, unfortunately had to be delivered by our tropical tutor, Bill Chapman, from his insider news from UH, that Kaikendal Hall that we just recently had some hopes back that it would be brought back to its original beauty with its louvre. Uh, that's not going to happen. As he said, they're going to demolish that. And that's something we really have to boo and find this really bad. And we have a good proof of evidence why we think this is so wrong. And that gets us to the next page, because there's a precedent for that, right, DeSoto? Well, yeah, there's uh, uh... that Snyder Hall that was there. Yeah, and that, that's the problem, too. Um, we're seeing architecturally distinguished buildings being demolished, and there may be a variety of reasons why buildings are being demolished. Of course, it could be because they are outdated. It could be because they have become, uh, they're in poor condition, which doesn't mean very, doesn't look well for the building uh, not being maintained. But... Uh, from the standpoint of somebody who is a historian, that being me, uh, I always am disappointed to see architecturally distinguished buildings from particular time periods being removed and destroyed. 
And this again is part of the mall that was that's located on the grounds of the UH Manoa campus. And the buildings that line the mall were all built during this post-war period in the mid-century modern period. And even though they were very diverse, they are uh, all of that same time period in extending from the late 40s into the early 70s even. So for that to have been lost with, again, the attributes that we like to favor, the lack of air conditioning, the, la the uh, acknowledgement and use of the natural air movement in Manoa Valley from the Mauka side to the Makai side, these are things which are now lost and can't be brought back. And yeah. as, as we point out in the show, if you're going to demolish something, replace it with something that's better. Well, at the moment, there isn't a replacement. But is the what's going to come up actually going to be better, or is it going to be using more fossil fuel? Uh, that's for sure. And strangely, as so-called bottom left, that sort of ghosty gray picture there is what they told us, what they showed us, what's going to replace it. And we rubbed our eyes and say, doesn't that look like almost like the existing building? Why do you tear something down and replace it with something that is not similarly different? You know, it should be way better. And this is a uh, Takashi Anbi, that was a Takashi Anbi building, and it's gone. And next slide. Uh, this is uh, saying hi to our friend, Ron Lindgren, who we miss uh, because Harbor uh, Square uh, by his boss, Edward Killingsworth, uh, was originally um, commissioned to Takashi Anbi. And we wish we would have these problems back, these great problems to have that two of the best architects, you know, and who do you choose, right? This is a great problem. I want these problems back. <laughs> and next slide <laughs> is concluding our Alamoana uh, area investigation. Um, this situation here, we won't see anymore, <clears throat> never ever, because it's smothered and, 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 and obscured with all these hermetic inclusive high rises as show quote in the middle at the bottom all these green blue ones. And to the right of that one, the developer even on their website puts a big button over the other Moana building. Uh, that must be a bad accident, hopefully not uh, intention. And, you know, we were saying, you know, you, you could say, I don't care for Blue Hawaii uh, show quote, second to top right, where Elvis and Miley strategically have their um, uh, picnic uh, up there on Tantalus looking at the beacon of the Alamoana building. But show quote, top right, we have just been uh, reviewing the new Elvis movie. And, you know, um, the next Elvis movie, we encourage Eric Bricker and others to do about Elvis's significant area in Hawaii. So these, these things, they're vintage. They will never go out of style. And we should treasure them. We should make them the, 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 the centerpiece on the table. Uh, the lazy Susan with all the yummy stuff, you know, and, you know, Adam Wana building has a lazy Susan saucer, flying saucer, <laughs> Susan on top of it. Uh, next slide. And we got to rush through it because we only have a couple of minutes left here. Uh, giving, uh, bringing our uh, hope back up. Uh, Alfred Yee was the engineer on all these marvelous projects. And this is me at the very bottom right when I had the chance to meet uh, L once only in his life before he left us. And uh, he gave me a crit for Primitiva 1. And based upon that top right show quote, we were as if we would have known that the mall owner is going for change of zoning, we would put a Primitiva up on the parking uh, of the mall as the uh, proletarian power tower uh, for all the service people who live in the mall. And since primitivas are natural and not architectural, then uh, the people living, for example, in the Alamana Hotel on the, on the thin end wouldn't uh, feel uh, their view is obstructed because they're just looking at an architectural tree. Next slide. Uh, primitivas aren't that easy. I'm just saying that with, you know, also there is an analogy to bamboo as the structure of Primitiva 1 top left. In Primitiva 2 top right, we've been looking at another curtain wall replacing the invasive American glass curtain wall by a water curtain wall. 
And the bottom ones are basically looking at uh, so far not tapped into technologies for Primitiva 3, which is tensegrity and basalt cables and cores to use as a structure. And this is what we believe what L uh, would do if he would still be with us. And that's what he encouraged us to. And last and final slide here is uh, the three Primitivas in a row and the poster for the exhibit that Bunnett had put together here with a slightly different uh, inhabitant here from your Mazia, because this lady here uh, is one of your ancestors, uh, you know, just a uh, hundred years ago, which isn't much uh, on the big marathon of um, the time frame of the earth. And why wouldn't we want to live like her again? And this is the point we're making. So we're at the end of not just the show, but of our 17 volumes of Midtown Flunk. And so we will see you uh, next week again, because on the way here, we discovered that there's a raw model for Honolulu, as it seems, as far as high rise and skyline resulting out of high rises development. And that is the city of Chicago. And that's why we had sent us there recently. And we promised to investigate more about similarities and differences. So hopefully we see you for that next week. And until then, uh, hopefully you stay peaceful and healthy. And COVID free, unlike exactly. you, unlike exactly. you. I promise to get over it. You will. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.